Hey guys, uh, this video is an update to my last video about engine break-in and motor oil. And in that video I took a sample of the factory oil, that's the oil that comes in the bike when you get it brand new, and I sent it to Blackstone Labs for an analysis. And the question that I was trying to answer is, is there anything special about that factory oil that's, that's meant for the engine break-in process? Um, and so what I was really looking at is what additives are in the oil that are meant to help uh, engine break-in specifically zinc and phosphorus. Those are two common things you see with special oils that are formulated for engine break-in because they help protect the metal during the break-in process. And what I found was that the additives were about the same between the factory oil and a typical off-the-shelf oil. So my conclusion was that it didn't seem like Kawasaki is using a special break-in oil from the factory. It looks like they're just using a normal motorcycle oil. Um, but since then, I just emailed Kawasaki and I asked him the question, is there anything special about your oil that's uh, meant to help the break-in process? And they actually responded, and the rep said, the oil that comes pre-filled in the units is a little thinner to help with the break-in period, so we wouldn't recommend changing it until the specified scheduled time according to the owner's manual. And she also said that it doesn't matter whether you use a conventional oil or a synthetic oil as long as it's the right grade, as long as it's 10W40. So that was interesting to me because based on my first video and the oil analysis, I was looking at the additives in the oil and I didn't think that they were using a special oil, uh, but Kawasaki says they do use a special oil, um, but she doesn't mention the additives, she just says that it's the oil itself is a little bit thinner. Alright, so motor oils, whether they're conventional or synthetic, are made up of two main things, and the first is the base oil or the base stock, and that's the oil itself. And then the second thing is the additive package. And those are the different chemicals that are added for different purposes uh, that help clean the engine, protect the metal surfaces, and stabilize the oil. Um, and based on the, the oil analysis, we really didn't see much of a difference in the additive package. Uh, but what Kawasaki is saying is that the base stock is thinner for break-in purposes. In other words, the oil has a lower viscosity. And the oil analysis actually gives us data on viscosity so we can see how it compares. So if we look at the oil analysis, again this is for the factory oil that came out of the bike, um, there are two different measures of viscosity. And these are both measurements for the oil when it's at temperature, uh, at operating temperature rather. So the first is the SUS viscosity at 210 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's a value of 72. And the second is the CST viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius, and that's 13.48. So we're not used to seeing this uh, rating for viscosity. When we look at motor oils, we see things like 10W40, 20W50. Um, the, the second number, so at, in a 10W40, the 40 represents the viscosity of the oil when it's at operating temperature. So that's the number that we would compare to these figures here. Uh, the 10W stands for winter, and so that's the viscosity of the oil when it's cold. So we're not going to be talking about that right now. Um, so these viscosity ratings, we can actually compare using this chart. And if you look at this column right here, this is the SAE engine oil rating. So these are the numbers that we're used to seeing. You have 5W, 10W, and then 20, 30, 40. So because we're talking about the viscosity of the oil when it's at temperature, we're going to be comparing it to this 40 figure. And this shows kind of a range uh, compared to these other measurements. So the factory oil has an SUS viscosity at 210 degrees Fahrenheit of 72. And if we look here, we have SUS, 210 degrees Fahrenheit. And so we look at 72, that would be right about here. And if we compare that to the SAE engine rating, you can see it's kind of right at the bottom of the 40. So that's thin for a 40 weight, but it's still in the 40 weight range. And then if we look at the CST viscosity 13 at 100 degrees Celsius, it's 13.48. So CST, 100 degrees Celsius, 13.48 would be... Let's see, right about here. And again, right, it's at the bottom of the 40 weight. So that basically means that it's on the thin end of a 40 weight oil. Now to compare it, we can look at Mobile One's rating. Uh, this is for the Racing 4T 10W40 oil. This is the oil that I used at my first oil change. And they provide CST at 100 degrees Celsius, and it's 13.1. So this is actually a little bit thinner 
than the factory oil, which was 13.48. And again, if we look at the chart, 13.1 right here. So it's on the thin end of the 40 weight range. So what's the conclusion of all of this? The Kawasaki representative clearly stated that they do use a specific oil for engine break-in purposes. And for that reason alone, I think it's probably a good idea to stick with the factory oil for the first 600 miles. Clearly, Kawasaki is thinking about it. They've chosen an oil deliberately for engine break-in, and so it's a good idea to stick with that. With that said, though, the oil seems very, very close to other quality motorcycle oils, such as the uh, Mobile One 10W40 motorcycle oil uh, that I used. So when we compare the additive packages and the viscosities, um, they're very comparable. So I think the results, if you changed out your oil to this during the break-in period, you're still going to end up with a good result for your engine break-in, just because the oils are very similar. So the, the Kawasaki oil for break-in isn't really a big deviation than just the standard 10W, 10W40 motorcycle oil. Um, so hopefully this information is interesting, or at least it's helpful to uh, some of you guys. Um, I'll be coming out with a video in the near future summarizing all of my thoughts on engine break-in, so I'll talk a little bit more about oil and just what are best practices for engine break-in and what are the things that are occurring during engine break-in. Uh, so keep an eye out for that if this is a topic that's interesting to you. And as always, thanks for watching.